Okay, so just to start off, can you give a brief introduction of who you are and your background as an artist? Sure. Uh, my name is Azad Hosseini. I am an American-born artist raised in an Iranian family, uh, raised in Iran, and experiencing lots of migrating from country to country, city to city, neighborhood to neighborhood, and then coming back to U.S. I received my bachelor's degree in fine art with um, painting in Iran, and then I continued my education with master's degree in San Francisco Academy of Art with non-figurative painting, and I got my master. Uh, I started learning uh, in my uh, father's studio, um, started with just painting with the principle of art at the age of like 13, and then um, ever since I've been just doing it. So for a long time, I considered myself just a painter, but then it was um, around 2013, I decided to work with some material like newspapers, magazines, uh, in general recycled paper, but uh, for some project specifically newspapers. Um, that's the whole description about my journey as an artist. Um, I work almost eight hours a day uh, art for me is a journey of uh, bringing new questions instead of just giving an actual statement. Uh, there is always a question behind each piece. The question sometimes I have answer for, sometimes I do not. Um, but in general, I consider my art as drawing. Drawing is a strong part of my journey. So besides building, I do a lot of drawing. Um, when I build up something which is three-dimensional, I still call them three-dimensional drawing. So I see all of them as a package of, as I said, questioning. Cool. Um, can you speak a little bit more about your educational journey um, from Iran to the U.S. and how that has influenced in any way your approach to art? Well, when I received my bachelor in Iran, I never um, had another thought to get my master. I thought uh, being an artist is about experiencing, touching the materials, being around people, being part of the society to learn. But then when I moved to US, at the first I thought I just wanted to um, continue with my academic journey, um, teach maybe, start teaching at some point. So I participated into the university which was a great, interesting new experience in terms of learning about this culture, which was kind of new to me. Um, and then when I got my master, I decided to not uh, participate in any university as a teacher. And I just continued with focusing on my uh, art. Um, so I, you spoke a little bit about like the concepts. Um, that you're interested in, but can you kind of expand on that? What is it that you uh, like to explore through your art? Well, maybe just being an immigrant, constant immigrant for a long time, uh, made me to think of um, the condition of human being in a modern era as a whole, instead of just going specifically on one issue to another issue. I've been experiencing almost the same issue every time I've been moving to a new place. There is lots of cultural barrier, even in my own country, going from one, kind of one city to another city, even neighborhood to neighborhood. And then when I moved to US, I realized that even here, you can see the same thing. Maybe the differences is between just the color, or what is their background. But as a whole, we are just encountering with the same issue constantly. So I decided to um, focus on uh, the system and what is creating all of those uh, struggles for people or problems instead of just spending time on one issue, with, for example, women or children. But then, as I said, since I was an immigrant, so I thought let's do um, pay attention to immigrants also. So recently I've been thinking and reading and studying about home, what home means to people. And so my uh, recent work is all about finding a place as a shelter, how we can build up that shelter, how we define the uh, concept of shelter. Um, I also saw on your website uh, that 
um, emotions and just uh, like that whole emotional approach is a big part of your work. So can you speak a little bit more on that and how you incorporate that into your art? So it's been a long time now working abstract artworks, but the abstract is just the feature of my work. So there are lots of emotion going on. So instead of talking using the um, words to express myself, I prefer to use the lines. So there are lots of emotion when I get angry, when I get emotional, when I'm happy, they're all going into my lines. So the one of the reasons drawing is a strong uh, language for my art is that to express myself. So mm, people, when they're looking at abstract art, I always think that there's nothing behind that. So maybe it's better to not mention them as abstract work because they're not. So physically they look like abstract, but there, uh, there's a lot going on behind that. So the drawing is uh, my emotional language. Hmm. So would you say that the lines are like intentional because of the emotion? Like part of it is, yeah, part of them are intentional, but part of them is something that is out of control. You just let them go mm -hmm. uh, with the knowledge of drawing that you have, the emotion kind of control your line. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, also, uh, are you drawn to any specific mediums or materials when creating um, your pieces? I know you spoke a lot about like drawing, um, sculptures, uh, newspapers, I think you mentioned. Um, what is it that draws you to using those materials in your work? So as I said, drawing is a very quick approach to express uh, myself. But um, again, I can bring my ideas on the paper and examine them how they're going to be. But working with newspaper, more of like, I've been considering how come we receive the news constantly, but we don't have power to go through each one of them and find a solution for the news that we hear. So sort of we are just piling up the news instead of just finding a solution, or maybe we don't have any solution. So that was the first initial idea that came to my mind that these are just uh, apparently useless. We are just hearing them and using them and just maybe cleaning the windows, for example, with the newspapers. So I'm using the actual newspapers to just symbolize that idea. Uh, although it's a time that we usually use our iPhones or like laptops to read the news, but still I'm using the papers to, as a metaphor of, you know, ideas to uh, presenting the news, something that is um, not useful, something that um, doesn't have a profound meaning for us anymore, apparently. Um, but then at the same time, paper itself is very flexible and touching. So when you touch it, uh, you feel that you can build up something, you can uh, transfer your emotion directly to that paper. And also besides all of those, it's very nice to touch it and create some shapes, beautiful form with that. So it's a combination of all of them. Every time I decide to use a new material, I still think that there is much more into the paper. Let's still stick with that and see what else I can do with this. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then sculpture, what, what's your, um, I guess like a method behind using sculpture to kind of um, explore those same ideas? Um, Especially recently there, I thought I have to um, think about the shelter. I started thinking how I can make them as a place that people can walk around and try to see themselves in a place that they do not belong to. Like when we are passing homeless people uh, place, I can call a shelter for them. The only way we can feel it is we can go nearby, we can sit inside. Other than that, we're just some audiences just passing by quickly. We don't feel it, we don't touch it. I'm trying to bring the feeling, create a feeling for people. They can understand what's going on. They can touch it. And, and touching is very important for me. So I prefer they can just walk through the whole sculpture and see themselves into that moment and situation. Um, another question, uh, do you consider yourself to be a diasporic artist? Um, and how is this experience reflected in your work, if at all? I guess I am. 
I've been always, as I said, my experiences just show me that always you're a stranger to a culture, you are bringing something new to the culture and you're learning from that culture. And I don't know if it's good or bad, I don't want to judge it, but um, you're never part of the new culture, even if you feel you are, you are not. So uh, yes, I am. Um, the thing is after moving a lot of time, like uh, it's been so many times, I've learned that instead of just being uh, depressed or disappointed of just being part of a new culture, although you're not really part of it, try to see how you can bring new stuff to the culture and what you can learn from that culture. But the most important thing, there are so many common um, desires into all the cultures that goes back to um, the human being. And I think we are all the same. We are just experiencing different situations. Yeah. Um, can you actually, this is the question about the pieces for the exhibition. So can you speak um, a little bit more on the creative approach and the creative process behind those pieces? So the new study that I'm doing and I'm doing it, uh, in general, I named it human stories because there's so much different stories into that. But this piece is spe specifically showing as I said, a shelter, a place that we are dreaming for. Um, and always when we're thinking about the house, we're thinking about it, uh, in geometric shapes, we are thinking about a square, uh, something very strong, but sometimes it's not as strong as we are thinking, especially when people migrating to new places, they are fleeing from their country because of the hard situation they have. Or other people, when I'm looking at homeless people, you still see the same structure, but they're fragile. There are so many layers that has been built up on top of each other. So it's not the strong home that we are um, desire for or we are dreaming for. So this is the whole idea. Uh, when you look at the piece, the piece is included four sort of square shapes, but they are made of a lot of layers, as I said. They are some broken parts into that. So um, yeah, cool. that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the title of the exhibition is Our Tears Are Sweet, Our Laughter Venomous, um, which is a quote from Simeen Babahani. Um, is the quote a sentiment that you share? And how does uh, that poetry fit into the multiple roles that you are asked to take on? Well, the, the piece, actually, I searched a lot about that because I know singing, but I never heard this piece. It's uh, apparently part of a piece of poetry that singing was written after the eight years of war between Iran and Iraq, which was very emotional and very touching. So I experienced the eight years of war. And I still um, struggle with the, all the memory with the war. And I can completely feel for that, not necessarily saying every single word because I, um, that's a new poetry to me, as I said. But since I know her and I know her concern and I know um, what kind of committed poet she is about the society and human being, I can feel uh, myself part of this piece and my artworks. So it's talking about the humans, the struggles human going through, uh, all the difficulties, Mm, yeah. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, it's connected to your ideas and, you know, the concept. Sorry, of I can say, I can, I cannot say literally is translating what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but definitely as a whole, I can see how connected it is with my concerns as an artist. Hmm. Um, and so what is it that you hope that your viewers take away from your work after experiencing it, after viewing it? What is it that you hope they walk away with? I hope that they start questioning that, first of all, what they're looking at, more than just the geometric shapes, what these shapes are sort of broken, what are the layers? And before they start searching about the artist who made it, what is the background of artists, how they can see themselves into the pieces. And if they feel any connection between themselves and the pieces, a start question, why pieces are familiar in terms of what? And then they can go back and search about me as the artist who built up the pieces 
and see if there's something that they can be connected with. Um, and so last question, is there anything else um, as an Iranian woman artist working in the US, um, any additional thoughts that you would like to share in reflection of that experience? Well, that's actually very interesting because every time you mention that, for me, in my case, it's very interesting because if I mention that I'm an American born, everybody expect that I'm an American artist. They expect to see something different than when I say I was raised in Iran and I'm part of an Iranian family. And the difference is as soon as you say I'm an Iranian woman, woman they start asking questions about, is there any trace of being a Middle Eastern woman into your work? And the answer is yes, but more than that, I'm a human and I can show all the difficulties and problems into the pieces. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I'm not specifically working on women issues. I think women issues are, uh, you can see a less or more everywhere. Um, I'm trying to show what human being is struggling and what are the problems. But these are the, uh, the question I usually get when I mentioned that I'm an Iranian artist woman. Yeah, which is, that's actually a common uh, answer that I've gotten a lot and that's, yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I, I actually had another question uh, when it comes to um, your art. I saw that like, there's a lot of, you spoke about a lot of like the emotional aspect of it on your end. So it's very personal in that way, but uh, you, it also said that you, um, observe other people's emotions and kind of put that into your work how, how do you how do you do that the thing is when I'm so I'm very connected with people I love to speak with people I love to walk through their life and as I said I can see so many common um points into people's um life and no matter if they're American they're Iranian they belong to other countries and when they start talking about their problems um, even if it's their gender if they're poor family if they belong to the society that uh, experiences segregation any other one so me as a human think that how much I can feel their pain and that pain as I start to absorb their pain so it comes to my heart and of course the first thing I grab is my pencil or my drawing um, materials I immediately start showing it on paper or you know the substrate that I choose to do that uh, it's kind of like I always say instead of crying that people can see I'm crying for them I cry on my paper so I show all the emotion on the paper it depends what is the topic that I'm thinking of for example like two years ago or three years ago, when one of the um, immigrants ship, the people who were fleeing from their country just drowned and all the people drowned in that ship. The only thing I had was my material to show it on the paper. Because other than that, you imagine you cry for five minutes and then next morning you forget about everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, so it's kind of almost like a, an archive of those emotions and experiences. In exactly. Your Archive is a right word because I have this word in most of my artworks that even one of my exhibitions was archive of the living, the people who are alive and living with a lot of problems, but nobody can see them. So it's basically piling up of their problems without even finding a solution for them. So it's archive, exactly. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for that. Let me.